Welcome to the Flashy Science Potential Divider experiment. On the screen, you'll see two digital multimeters or DMMs, a power supply for applying potential difference, and two resistors. The resistors are connected in series via this junction, and the different band colors on the resistors code for their resistance values. Now we can change these simply by clicking on a resistor to move to the resistor select screen. We can now choose the band we wish to change so that it starts flashing. And then select from the available colors in the palette so that the resistor becomes that color. So band one is now red. I mentioned that the band colors code for resistance. Actually, the first three bands code for the central value of resistance. So here, band one red and then black and red codes for 2000 ohms or two kilo ohms. And the fourth band shows the tolerance this is gold at the moment, which means plus or minus 5%. So the actual value of resistance lies within 5% of 2000 ohms. Of course, 5% of 2000 ohms is 100 ohms, which means the resistor will have a resistance somewhere between 1900 and 2100 ohms. To find out more of how these bands code for resistance, you can see the full instructions for this experiment online. Or you can do a slightly simpler experiment on Ohm's law. You can also do an online search, or you'll see the codings of resistor color bands displayed in many science and engineering labs. To return this resistor to the main experiment, click on the green and white confirm button. You will now see that the resistor is in the main experiment. We can measure the resistance of either or both of these resistors by using the right hand DMM. First, click and drag the dial until it's pointing at the ohms symbol, which means resistance. Then click on one of the crocodile clip contacts and you will see the outer wires of the resistors and the center position start to flash. Click on one of these locations to position the contact there. Now repeat this for the other crocodile clip and the DMM will show the resistance of whatever lies between the contacts, whether it is one or both of the resistors. Here you can see that the resistance of the left hand resistor is precisely two kilo ohms which is that coded by the colored bands. This doesn't always happen though. If I move the black contact to the far end, then we can measure the resistance of the two resistors together, or of course, we can move the red crocodile clip and measure the resistance of the resistor on the right. To apply a potential difference, turn on the power supply by clicking on the power button and then click and drag the dial to the desired level. The screen displays the potential difference in volts. We can again use the right hand DMM to measure the potential difference. So click and drag the dial to this symbol, which means DC volts. Currently, we're measuring the potential difference across the right hand resistor. But if we move the position of the red crocodile clip, we can measure the potential difference across both resistors in series, which is, of course, the same as the value of the power supply output. If we move the black crocodile clip to the central position, then we measure the potential difference across the left hand resistor. This allows you to get to the heart of the potential divider circuit and understand how it works by changing the resistance values and changing the potential difference across the resistors. We can also measure the current going through the resistors. We need a different connection arrangement for this, which the left hand DMM is already in. We click and drag the dial to this symbol with the straight and dotted lines above the letter A, which means DC current. The DMM display now shows the current through the resistors, which here is 2.43 milliamps. As we change the potential difference applied to the circuit, you will see the current change as well. The experiment also has additional functionality that you can access via this icon in the top left of the screen. This opens a menu with five more icons. The first icon simply closes the menu again. The second icon returns you to the experiment when you are on a question screen. We'll come to those shortly. The third is the click information icon. Selecting this will highlight all of the areas on the screen that can be clicked 
to control the experiment. The fourth icon opens up a screen on questions directly related to the experiments you might have just performed. And the final icon opens up revision questions that cover the area of potential dividers more generally. All questions are answered automatically and many contain randomly generated numbers so you can retake them as many times as you like for practice. We hope you enjoy exploring the potential divider with this flashy science experiment.